How y'all doing? Hope everybody's doing well today. This is a special day in Christianity. Uh, this is the day that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from the dead. As before we start this Bible study, I'd uh, like to uh, say uh, some prayer to our Father. Our Father, thank you for the ability to uh, to be able to worship you today. This is a great day. This is uh, where we we uh, praise our Lord Jesus Christ to you, Father, that he is the Messiah that you sent and died for our sins and beat death and took the keys of Hades away and offers us salvation through him. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I'm over in uh, Chile Coast, uh, Texas, in a chicken farm right now. So you might be seeing me swat away flies because today's extra pungent <laughs> if you've been at a chicken farm. I don't know what it is. It it don't smell too good, but hey, you know, I'm, I'm still grateful that we could get in our Father's Word. And I woke up a little bit. I drank some coffee. I, I attempted this earlier. I couldn't do it. You know, so it was like, I guess, you know, coffee kind of runs the show sometimes, you know, and um, unless I wake up, it takes around noon for my brain to wake up or so some reason so uh where we're gonna start it is uh we're passover we're uh in, in exodus 12 uh 13 through 24 and uh we're gonna go ahead and begin okay so this is where passover started all right and uh it's, it's in the land of egypt to summarize the, the jews are in the land of egypt are so still in slavery and Moses is giving instructions to all the the uh, Jews to um, go ahead and get a a lamb, unblemished lamb, and uh, slay it, and then put the the blood on the on the doorposts so that the angel could, of death will pass by. And this is another this is symbolism of of Christ's sacrifice, the foreshadowing what was to come. We're gonna start on verse thirteen of Exodus twelve. And the blood shall be to you for token upon the house where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. 14. And this day shall be unto you for memorial. And you shall keep it to feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by your ordinance forever. 15. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your house for whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day the soul shall be cut off from israel and in the first day there shall be an holy convocation and in the seventh day they shall be a holy convocation to you no matter the work shall be done in them save that which every man must eat that only may be done of you 17 and you shall observe the feast of the leavened bread. So the symbolism of, of um, sin to uh, bread is the leaven, the yeast. So just a little bit of yeast will cause the whole loaf to be leavened. So that's kind of the same thing with uh, sin. You know, we let a little bit of sin in and it takes over, you know, and uh, it's just symbolic of, uh, you know, to stay away from it, you know, and, and call to God his strength if you're, if you're struggling. And uh, with that, we'll continue. And, uh, verse 17. For in the same, self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day in generations by ordinance forever. 18. In the first month of the 14th day of the month, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in the house, for whosoever eateth which is leavened, even the soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. 21. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take your lamb according to your families and kill the Passover, and you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is the basin and strike the lintel on the two side posts with the blood that it is in the basin 
and none you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning. So this is instructions of, from Moses to the to the elders to uh, tell everybody to uh, slay the the lamb and put the blood on the, on the post. And uh, with that, we continue verse twenty three. And the Lord will pass through the smite the Egyptians when he heard when he seeth the blood upon the lintel on the two side posts. The Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into the house to smite you. 24 and you shall observe this thing for for ordinance to thee and thy sons forever so this is part of uh passover uh sunday and it's a foreshadow of, of christ and um uh, is it's uh and then understanding the um uh leavened bread uh, unleavened bread uh um observing of the feast so with that we're gonna move on to uh First Corinthians five seven eight where it talks about how Christ becomes our Passover. And with that, first uh, first Corinthians five chapter five verse seven and eight. Purge out therefore old leaven that ye may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Per Excuse. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not the old leaven, neither with the the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So we got to purge um, wickedness out of our life, sin out of our life. This is part of being um, born again, you know. Yet Christ did all the work for us and the and the cost and paid the price for sins for our penalty with the wages of sins was death. So. You know he uh he did that but it's our responsibility too to uh, reject the works of the devil and if you don't know what those are um, it's looking the, uh, the Bible for the the fruits of the spirit versus the fruits of the flesh you know you'll find the definitions of that also um, with that I want to continue on with uh, mark 16 1 6 and uh in, in mark this is where uh this is where the um our lord and savior uh rose from the dead so we begin on chapter 16 1 through 6 and when the sabbath day was passed mary Magdalene and mary the mother of james and solomon solomon had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him and, and it, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the, the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, verse 3. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll, us, roll away the, stun, the stone from the door of the sepulchre? It was the tomb. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it, it was very great. Five and entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And they said, and they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not afraid, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He has risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. He's alive, everybody. Rejoice, rejoice. Right on. I love to hear that. I love to hear that our God's a, a God of the living. He is the God of the living. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. We love you. Thank you for protecting us from the evil one. Thank you for turning back what what the, happened in the Garden of Eden. Ripping the holy, a holy curtain from top to bottom to where we could commune with you through through authority of your son lord jesus christ thank you thank you right on let's move on let's go to revelations 119 i'm getting a little excited here you know revolutions 119 write the things that thou hast seen oh, excuse me 18 revolution revelations uh 118 i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death 
So he has the keys of hell and, and of death. He beat death. And we're and we're no longer a slave to sin. This is this is a great thing. This is a great thing. This is the good news of the gospel. We're supposed to go out and teach. Awesome. Awesome stuff. I'm excited. Hebrews 10, 1 through 10. We're gonna we're gonna see what all the animal sacrifice was about. Okay. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things that can never with those sacrifices which were offered year by year continually make the comers thereon too perfect. So animal sacrifice was not sufficient for God as the payment for sins. Verse 2. For they for then they would not have ceased to be offered because that the worshippers once purged should have and had no more conscious of sins. They had to repeat this every year. So it, it didn't do away with the sins. Uh, it it delayed God's wrath upon them. They're being obedient, the Jews. And uh, this is a foreshadowing, foreshadowing of Christ as he came. So they were constantly reminded of their sins. But with Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation, which means... There is no repeating it. It's done. It is finished. We don't dwell on it. We still have the memory, so we don't backslide. But we don't dwell on our sins of the past because Christ has paid the price. Verse 3. But in no sacrifice there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls or goats should take away sins. 5. Wherefore... When he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. 6. In the burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. 7. Then said I, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. 8. Above when he said, Sacrifice offerings and burnt offerings, and offerings for sin, thereon which we were offered by the law. 9. Then he said, Lo, I come to thy will, O God. He taketh away first, that he may be established a second. 10. Listen to this. By which we were, we will all sanctify through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Let me repeat that. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The perfection of Jesus Christ's sacrifice is done. It satisfies God's wrath on us. And we accept them as the payment for our sins. You got to make that choice. You got to make that choice. I wish I could do it for you. I wish I had the power, but you have to willingly come to God. You got to willingly come to Jesus because he didn't make us robots. His mercy and kindness, he could have destroyed us, our mankind in the Garden of Eden the minute uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed him. But he's given us all chances because he knew us from the, he knew us before the foundations of this earth were laid. Who was gonna be born? What the souls were gonna be? You know, what time, the the years and the, and the centuries that we were gonna be born in. So he knew all this, and he allows us to make our choices, each as individuals. That's mercy. That's mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you for being merciful. You're a merciful God. And let's let's do this one. John 3:16. I love this verse. And it's and it's such and it's a verse I'm I'm sure that most people know. Even atheists, non-believers, just straight rebellious believers alike all everybody the whole world i'm sure knows this verse it's john three sixteen. for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can you imagine the pain we go through when we lose a loved one but when you start to believe the promises of Christ, you will see them again. You will see them again. 
I can't, if I can do something, if I can bring my family towards God so that we can rejoice in heaven with them, I'll do it. I'll do it. Because I want that for them. And I want that for you. Thank you, Father. We're going to close with this. Thank you, Father, for your Lord Jesus. Thank you for the atonement of our sins. Through the blood of Christ that covers our sins. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We give praise to you today. And the Holy Spirit, guide and direct us as we go through these times. These, uh, we shall fear no evil because you're with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.